On a newsreel for the first time, those almost legendary figures, the Chindits. Masters in guerrilla warfare, they've taught the Japanese to fear the swift striking columns of elusive fighting men who wage war after their own fashion deep in the Burma jungle. Chinese units under General Stilwell move up to join forces with the Chindits. In the dense forest, mules replace mechanical transport. They carry the supplies for the foot-slogging infantry. After bitter fighting, the Chinese drove the Japs out of Magong railway station and joined the Chindits. This was a great moment in the history of the Burma War and was celebrated by swapping hats. Air support for the final drive against the Jap positions. Outmaneuvered and outfought, the Japs pulled out of the town. Mogong had fallen. Chindits, that's the name for the guardian statues which stand at the steps of Burmese pagodas. A name from legend that's become flesh and blood, living guardians of Burma's liberty. The long tentacles of Allied armor are encircling the German armies remaining in northern France, both above and below Paris. Now, with Paris freed, the best roads in France are open to the swift and maneuverable tanks of the Allied spearheads. In front of the columns go flail tanks to explode mines, sown in the roads by the retreating Nazis. Consider the feelings of German troops who fought their way out of the blazing gateways from Normandy and Brittany, only to find themselves on hemmed-in roads, blasted ceaselessly by Allied aircraft. The disruption of the German supply line is a major factor in the defeat of the enemy. As on land, so at sea. Here, aircraft of coastal command are attacking an enemy convoy off Heligoland. Nine merchant ships escorted by more than 30 fighting vessels. Cannon shells, rockets and torpedoes ripped into the ships. Four merchantmen were torpedoed, five escort ships were left burning furiously. With complete command of the air, the Allies can move their spearheads rapidly, with the certain knowledge that their supply system won't be interfered with by the Luftwaffe. On the enemy side, the cumulative effects of the great bomb loads being dropped day and night on the Nazi war weapons machine must be devastating. In a few minutes, the Allied bombers destroy what it's taken the Germans months to rebuild. Meanwhile, the Allied power of maneuverability gives the enemy no respite. Repeatedly outflanked, the German soldiers have little choice. They can either retreat to their homeland for protection 
or join over 400,000 of their companions in death or surrender. Calling on the Germans to surrender, millions of such leaflets are dropped by the RAF. Allied tanks are followed by infantry for the job of carrying out nests of snipers left hidden by the Nazis. These pictures show Allied strafing planes in action, choking last-minute efforts by the Germans to bring supplies and reinforcements into the battle area. They're using rocket bombs one of the most terrifying and destructive close-action weapons yet evolved. When the Battle of France started with the Normandy landings, the German armies on the Western Front numbered over a million men. Today it's certain that only a small fraction of that once powerful force will be able to reach the frontiers of Germany. And over all that land of men and women who boasted they'd rule the world is the mounting thunder of a mighty and still growing air force. <laughs> 